What's up everybody? Welcome to a new English vid. I'm Katia and in today's lesson we're going to focus on informal lingers that will help you enrich both your speech and writing. Are you ready? So take a notebook and let's get down to work. Before we start, I'm going to give you the correct answer to the bonus question from the previous video. The correct answer is she met her husband through a mutual friend. So we don't say a common friend, but a mutual. It's a collocation. Remember, a mutual friend. So first, we're going to start with some features of informal writing. So whenever you have to write an article, a story, a review or an informal letter, you should bear some things in mind. To kick off, you need to use phrasal verbs. For example, to look up to, to take up or to turn down. Secondly, you should use descriptive adjectives. For example, exciting, excellent, gorgeous, stunning. Thirdly, you need to use descriptive adverbs. For example, incredibly, awfully or extremely. Also, remember to use contractions like I'll, she isn't or he doesn't. It's also a good idea to use direct questions addressed to the reader. For example, what would you do if you could take a gap year? On top of that, you could use direct speech. For example, impossible is nothing, she said. It's also important to give your writing a catchy title. For example, it's never too late. And last but not least, you should definitely use lingers, informal lingers. And in today's lesson, we're going to focus on informal lingers. They will come in handy as you can use them both in your speaking and in your writing. And you can use them both at the beginning of the paragraph and also inside to connect ideas and sentences. So I've divided lingers into 12 categories. The first one is listing points. So you can start your first or your second paragraph with first or firstly or first of all or to begin with. To introduce your second point, secondly, the third, thirdly, and your final point, finally, lastly, or eventually. You can also use next, then, or another point is. Let's move on to our second group, which is reason. The most common linker to express reason is because. You can use it at the beginning of the sentence or in the middle. An example sentence, because it was pouring down, I didn't go running. We can also use because of plus noun. It's really important to use a noun after because of. For example, the exam was put off because of the pandemic. Another linker is as, and it usually goes at the beginning of a sentence. For example, as I had some free time, I decided to go for a walk. We can also use in case plus clause, which means that there is a possibility that something might happen. For example, take an umbrella in case it rains. And linkers like due to, owing to or since are more formal. Now let's move on to our third group, which is result. So the most common linker to express result is so. For example, I was exhausted, so I went to bed. Let's move on to our next linker, number two, as a result. It's more formal than so, and it usually goes at the beginning of a sentence. For example, he didn't study, as a result, he failed the exam. We can also say as a result of something. For example, as a result of the coronavirus, a lot of companies made a loss. Another linker is that's why. For example, I love traveling, that's why I'm excited about my upcoming trips. 
Another linger is in this way. For example, you should watch everything in English. In this way, you will develop your ear. The last linger in this group is consequently. For example, I was worn out and consequently dropped off at the cinema. We have to use a comma before and, comma and consequently. Moving on to contrast, the most common and informal way of introducing contrast is but. It can go in the middle of a sentence or at the beginning. For example, I sent her a letter but never got a reply. And one more example, the dinner was quiet but everything changed when he showed up. Number two, however. It goes at the beginning of a sentence. For example, I enjoyed the book. However, the movie didn't live up to my expectations. Next one, although. The stress goes at the end, although. It can go at the beginning of a sentence or in the middle. For example, although I was afraid, I went down the sand dune. And one more example, he speaks English fluently, although he has never lived in an English-speaking country. Number four, even though. It's the same as although, but more emphatic. For example, even though it was raining, I went to the beach. Number five, the linker though. It can go in the middle or at the end of a sentence. For example, I had a good time, though it rained. And we usually place though at the end of a sentence when it's in formal language. For example, Valencia is a great city. It's rather hot in summer, though. We can also use on the one hand and on the other hand. Imagine we're talking about advantages and disadvantages of social networks. We can say on the one hand, you can find a lot of useful information. On the other hand, they can be rather addictive. We can also use while and whereas. For example, in your speaking exam in part two, when you compare and contrast two pictures, you can use these lingers, while and whereas. And the last lingers here are in spite of or despite and they are followed by a noun or a gerund. For example, despite being sick, she went to work. And another example, despite the bad weather, we had a barbecue. And very important, if we want to use a clause after despite or in spite of, we have to add the fact that and then subject and verb. For example, in spite of the fact that I was injured, I finished the marathon. Let's move on to number five, purpose. There are a lot of different ways to express purpose in English. One of them is by using to. For example, I'm saving money to travel to New York. We can also use so or so that. So is more informal. For example, I put on sunscreen so that I don't get burned. And we must use so or so that when there is a change of subject in the result clause. For example, I gave him a lift so that he would get to the interview on time. And the linkers so as to and in order to are more formal. Moving on to number six, addition. My favorite here is on top of that. It sounds really good, on top of that. We can also say in addition or what's more. We can also say another thing besides, plus, also, and. Another linker you can use is to make things worse. For example, if you complain about something and you talk about different problems you had, you can use this linker to make things worse. You can also use inversion, for example, not only, but also. And we can also use as well or as well as something. 
For example, she's going to Bali and Lombok as well. Or one more example, he brought a cake as well as soda. Let's move on to number seven, examples. We can use, for example, such or like. For example, I like sport such as swimming, running and yoga. Number eight, advantages and disadvantages. When we talk about advantages or disadvantages of something, we can say one key or one definite advantage or disadvantage of something is whatever. When we speak about advantages of something, we can say on the upside or on the bright side. And we can also say another advantage or disadvantage or downside or drawback is. Number nine, being specific. We can use as for. For example, as for special effects, they were stunning. Another linker we can use is when it comes to. For example, when it comes to traveling, I enjoy going to exotic destinations. And one more linker, talking about. For example, talking about series, I enjoy watching comedy sitcoms. Number 10, attitude adverbs. They go at the beginning of a sentence. For example, apparently, obviously, worryingly, curiously, happily, sadly, naturally, personally, interestingly, unfortunately, or fortunately. Importantly, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, astonishingly, and the last one, funnily enough. Number 11, opinion. For example, it seems to me that, I believe, I think, more linkers, in my opinion, I reckon, this one is very informal, I reckon. We can also say personally speaking, honestly speaking, to me, I'd say, or as far as I'm concerned. And the last category is summarizing. For example, to sum up, in a nutshell, I like this one very much, in a nutshell, or to cut a long story short. So guys, that's it for today. I hope you found this English bit useful and it will help your writings be more engaging and appealing. If you did, don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to my channel and catch me on Instagram. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!